Hey guys, gals, humans. I'm Inflatable Robot, and in this video I want to go over setting up the Octatrack to play nice with other synthesizers to act as like an, a mixer and an effects unit. So you can just take your Octatrack and a couple of pieces of gear out with you and you can play a show or write a track using just these things. Um, I get a lot of questions over how to set up through tracks, how to set up MIDI parameters and whatnot. So I'm just going to take you through setting that stuff up here. So let's have a little overview of how I have this set up right now. I've got the audio out from my Dreadbox Nix going into input D on the back of the Octatrack. I've got my um, key step, the MIDI out from the key step, going into the MIDI input on the Octatrack back here. Now I've got the MIDI output of the Octatrack going into the input on the Nix. So right now, if I hit some keys on the key step, you won't see any of the input lights bouncing on the Octatrack because it's not getting that MIDI information. So let's set that up first. So I'm going to hit the MIDI button to take us into the MIDI page. In order to set the MIDI up, I'm on track number six in MIDI mode. I'm going to double tap the playback button. This will bring up our MIDI note setup page. I want to twist this knob right here until I get to MIDI channel six. Now at this point, it's important to know that if I just leave it that way and back out, it's actually, it didn't save that setting. What I need to do is go to six and then click the button in. And then once that bit becomes unhighlighted, the channel becomes unhighlighted, then it is set. Okay, so now that I have MIDI channel six set up, I can back out of here. And if I play on MIDI channel six from my keyboard, it'll pass that data through to my synthesizer which I can see now when I hit a key on my keyboard that this, the light for input D is now lighting up when I hit a key, which means that the Octatrack can hear my synthesizer. But I can't hear the synthesizer. So now we need to set up a through track to correspond with the MIDI channel. So I'm going to back out of here. I'm going to go out of MIDI mode, and I'm going to... Likewise, on MIDI, uh, on track six, I'm going to set up a through track. So right now it's got that little squiggly line. It hasn't had anything set up on it. So I'm going to double tap the track button, and I'm going to go all the way to the left so I have my machine uh, dialog. I'm going to go down to through, and I'm going to hit yes. Now that that's highlighted, I can back out, and I have a MIDI through channel set up. Now I want to go to playback and I want to select my input. Now, because I'm going into input D, I'm going to scroll over to D here, and D is selected. Now, if I was going into A and B, or C and D as a stereo input, I would want to do it where it says A and B, if I'm on input A and B, or C and D, like so. Now, you might be tempted to go C plus D, and what the plus indicates is that it's taking the stereo signals and summing it to mono and that's probably not what you want if there's no plus sign there it is accurately representing stereo inputs so you probably want that if you're plugging in stereo but since i'm mono i just want d now i still can't hear my synthesizer i'm hitting the keys i can see the light bouncing but i can't hear anything that's because the gate is closed. Now, in order to open the audio gate to let the sound through, I've got to, well, there's two ways to do that. I can hold the track button and hit play, and now I can hear my keyboard. That's great, except it doesn't automatically open up. If I were to hit stop, stop again, it closes the gate. And if I were to hit play, 
and play the track that I had written, it wouldn't automatically open it. I'd have to hold hold the track and hit play, and that's not the most convenient way to do that. So instead of opening it manually, what we want to do is go into record mode by hitting the record button, so the record light's on, and placing a trigger at the beginning of the uh, of the bar. The very first trigger, when I hit play, as the playhead travels through that trigger, it will open up the gate. So I can hit stop, stop, close the gate down, hit play, and it opens the gate. And that should make it to where the MIDI and the through channel all play nice, and you can sequence your external hardware by going into the MIDI channel and, and recording your stuff in here because the MIDI data is going through the Octatrack and then out to the synthesizer, I can I can record by hitting holding record and hitting play. When this is flashing, it will start recording the MIDI data. And so there's the MIDI data I just put in. Let's move that over to where it's nice. So now you can manipulate that that sequencer data however you want, and everything's going to play nice. As far as questions I get on the channel, most of them are in regards to a previous Octatrack video I made, basically covering this. I went a little bit more in-depth here, uh, hoping to answer those questions for you, but if you have further questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll answer them best I can. All right. See you guys later.